very minty Miata you guys have. <laughs> not, not quite. <laughs> it's, what? it's very quite. minty. It's it's clean. Yeah. My my brother's got a Mazda Paint speed. Can hide a lot. <laughs> my brother's got a Mazda speed that's lifted, and the frame rail's completely gone on that side. Uh, our, our rockers aren't in great shape. Uh, weight reduction. <laughs> He's he's our neighbor here. It's just cool seeing all the variety. That's actually got a small block Chevy in it. And this is Drew and Leah's van we talked about that we didn't get to see when we were over in Minnesota. But it beats my expectations, that's for sure. We got the rally alums, the uh, Smokey and the Smokey Bandits. The bandits. I knew that. <laughs> I don't know why I was getting lost there. You guys got second gear back, right? No, no. No, oh, we still, didn't work we, on it. It's still somewhere. We just parked it and then decided to drive it again. So. Hey, there you go. Yeah. It's always good. I didn't drive any farther than 20 miles from home with my car and lost a wheel once I drove it, and I threw another wheel on it, and we're here, so. <laughs> it looks much better on you than I've been in some Star Wars things. Some of those people all not be wearing Star Wars costumes. So. Well, who's, yeah. the, who's the pilot from the first one, Porkins? Porkins, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I could be him. <laughs> well, Ed, your car is missing two wheels here. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to carry them. Oh, okay. <laughs> There you go, that works. I'm going to mount this chair. Car. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a little work to do. Is it, are you work. like Wonder Woman and this is the invisible car, not the invisible jet? <laughs> That's probably what it is. All right. I'm not telling. All right, I learned a secret. Got R2-D2 on the roof. Are you guys leaving him on the roof the whole time? No, I just figured as we were uh, my best as, we're, as we're parked, our astromech can stick out, but I, did, I think we'd lose him at about 30, 25, 30. Yeah. Right. He sits in the uh, back with me. There you go. Yeah, today, yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, like, good, I mean, like, microwave pot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, like this, this is a nice looking Mercedes. Got a Rampage. This car's actually from the retreat from Moscow last year. Five hundred thousand miles on a Saturn. Five hundred five thousand. Five hundred five. Yeah. Impressive. Bring back Saturn. <laughs> yes. Five hundred five, you said. Original motor. Damn. That is crazy. I have a first gen. It only has half that. That's and the motor's got to come out. <laughs> wow. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap Baird refugees and their super turd. Right, Jack? Absolutely. Typical K car that just is horrible but keeps on going despite your efforts to kill it. Well, you know the pumps like these two do. Why? So we, we have the, the very oh, I know. I was telling him. We're <laughs> okay. very rattly. Our mirrors falling off again. But, yes, we have... Um, This is the worst order from last year. They did a Star Wars theme, but now they are Melville's Whale Moby Dick. Yeah. Actually, in all honesty, I actually do put this in from time to time. The sacred texts are always relevant. I'm gonna do a pan up real quick. I fully expect you guys to do little blips in your video of reading. We already did it this morning. Oh, that's good. <laughs> we will. It was actually a pretty good passage, too. I opened it up, and it talked about competition and the spirit of it and everything. And I'm like, perfect. Lee is guiding us. He, he has blessed this, as he always does. 
Good morning. Oh, I'm gonna go get you guys some stickers so we can have some horsepower yes, to your car. Yeah, some more. Oh, hey. did you see all my performance mods here? Just give me a moment. I mean, I did pistons, brakes, can, everything. The question is, are any of those things on the car? Of course. Yes, they're right there. The, the stickers here. So you see, first off, you gotta start at the bottom. I did pistons um, because I had to run better pistons in order to run my nitrous system. So. Then, in order to keep the car nice and on the road well, I had to uh, get some racing wheels. Motor is running on the Swap synthetic lubricant. That was very necessary to keep everything, all the performance parts lubricated. Helped stop it. I threw some Willwood brakes Yeah, we were at pit race and engine. Monitoring everything. We got autometer instruments. They work pretty good. Uh, I got the ISKI cam for the little blah, 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 that makes it fast. Uh, because I did all of that, ARP holding the motor together, VP racing fuels for all the octane we got to be running now, uh, radiator to keep it cool, and it all came from Summit Racing. Wow. It's, and is there a TCI awesome. torque converter in there for you too? Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that is fantastic. This is for you. Thank you. It was given to me. By me. But it doesn't fit. Oh. Because we are luxury size. That is awesome. And you're normal human size, so we figured that you could work. This is for me. Wait. That's for you. This is, I mean, it's got the. There's a couple of notes. Uh, I, I know that we don't act like it anymore, but we are still technically in a pandemic. There are still COVID 19 policies in different states. So just make sure you respect the state, respect their laws, don't be a douchebag. We hear about you being a douchebag. We just won't have you on the rally anymore. It's pretty much that simple. Uh, so the first things you need, make sure anyone that's driving has an orange wristband. Anyone that's a minor has a checkered wristband. I think we only have a couple minors this time. And then you need a route packet. So if you haven't checked in with your score sheet with Megan and Kevin, you are failures in real life like me i work for lemon that's how you know when you failed in life uh i don't know if anyone's familiar with the crown rally but this year they had a fatality during the rally because people were driving like fucking assholes and crashed into the desert and killed two people so that means there's two families that don't have i mean they might have been jerks but they still aren't in their family anymore so safety is something that we continue to always have and continue to take seriously if you race with us, Mark can attest to it. We take safety very, very seriously and we will continue to do so. But just have that in the back of your mind that yes, if I drive like a complete jackass, there is a chance I will launch off the road and just kill myself and no one else. So again, this isn't a race. We're obeying all traffic laws. Uh, that means no speeding, and like I said. Uh, the only time you have to be somewhere and we're still telling you not to speed, so really it's about uh, figuring out your schedule on the last day, is at the award ceremony. You have to be present to win. If you're not at the award ceremony, just, you don't get a cool wrestling belt. There we go, you don't get a super sweet wrestling belt. You don't get to challenge Smokey and the bandits slash sex offenders for their wrestling belt. All right? Also, Drew and Leia, they also have a wrestling belt. They will challenge you with whatever their car is. Good luck figuring that one out. Uh, also, we're going to, you know, along the lines of obeying the laws, we're going to respect people's private property. None of our checkpoints should put you onto the property, but sometimes we put you property adjacent to make good decisions. If it looks like you can get away with trespassing, that's up to you. We're telling you not to, but it might look like you can get away with trespassing. So just make sure that you obey those laws, and if security or the cops show up, don't give them a hard time, just leave. Give them a sticker and then leave. Stickers fix everything. Uh, also, regardless of how well Eric and I plan these rallies, you've been, if you've been with us before, something's gonna be locked, a road's gonna be closed, a building won't exist anymore. We try to plan as best as we can. Uh, if you find a checkpoint uh, that you, know, you can't get directly to, taking a photo next to it's fine. If the checkpoint's just gone, just take a photo next to its corpse, and uh, that you know that'll continue to count for points. It happens every rally. There's nothing we can do about it. I guess we can. Yeah. No, there's nothing we can. Do. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I, another great thing is uh, one of my favorite parts of the rally. I, I ran a bunch of rallies in the beginning. Is staying with the group. It's one of my favorite things. 
So group up. Uh, you know, yes, you are competing, but for fake points and a piece of your <laughs> wrestling belt. So really, like, prioritize the relationships you may build or, you know, avoid Ed uh, during this rally. And, uh, sorry, Ed. <laughs> Just because you were right there. You were, I could see you right there. I apologize. I'm sorry. We love you. We love you, Ed. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, grouping up and hanging out with each other, uh, help each other out on the road. We have no sagging wagon. There's no one sweeping behind. Uh, every rally, someone calls me and says, my car broke down, and I say, I don't care. Because <laughs> I don't. If your car breaks down, I'm sorry that your car broke down, but you're going to have to call other people to figure it out. Someone on Southern Fried Heaps called me in a panic. We're still stuck. We're still stuck somewhere, and I'm just like... Okay, call a fucking tow truck. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to work on your 50-year-old Ford. Uh, so one thing that's specific to Rust Belt Rally, and it's something that we need to kind of keep in mind also, it's about being polite and being kind to others. Uh, this area is beat up. It's been through a lot. It's been through the grinder. It's been abandoned. It looks like this. Fuck you, Jeff. Fuck Sorry, you. Andy. <laughs> I'm from Detroit. So my There's literally a boat in that field out there. Like, <laughs> half a boat in that field out there. So be pot, be be continent, be kind to people. Um, you know, just be just be nice to the people that you meet. It makes this way more fun. Uh, when I did the rally with Roadkill, Kevin and I just like beelined, we're kinda dicks, we went by ourselves. We won a stupid trophy that I'm not even sure where it is. Uh, but the relationships that I made on other rallies where we slowed down and took time are, are worth much, much more to me uh, than any stupid trophy. So keep that in mind and just be kind to each other. So uh, everyone's been pointed out. Everyone's turned in their sheet to Megan. We've all visited Megan. We all got our wristbands. Hi, right, fuck off. Go win. <laughs> hey, everyone. This uh, video is going to be a little different than usual. Unfortunately, we lost a lot of our recordings on the trip. So we're just going to do a voiceover so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, as you can tell, this is our route book for day one of the Rust Belt Ramble 2022. Uh, the first checkpoint was the Hamtrak Disneyland in Hamtrak, Michigan. Uh, they also had a bunch of stuff in the backyard I did not get a picture of. Uh, second checkpoint was the Packard Factory uh, in Detroit. And it was kind of cool. We uh, hit it on the bus stop uh, the night before. And the car farm decided to christen the street for us. And uh, time lapse didn't go very well, and this is where we lost our recording. Uh, we had to stop at the Lost Peninsula of Michigan, which is actually just right into Ohio, for our third stop. And a bunch of teams were all kind of uh, congregating, including the super turds you see there. Um, there's uh, the Rice Krispies and Papa Smurf uh, hanging out there behind me while well, I got the Hoonicorn and everybody's looking at me funny. And the Jaguar, barely visible. I actually almost fell on the uh, guy driving it. His name was Matt, I believe, and uh, we made friends with him and it was pretty cool to see. Um, our next stop was the former Queen of the Lakes freighter in Toledo, Ohio. And uh, this is where our day kind of got interesting, because shortly after this uh, set of photos was taken, uh, Charlie's car, the Speedy Baja, decided it wanted to uh, snap off a alternator bolt in the alternator uh, due to a failing power steering pump. Um, on these rallies, they also give you a find it, which... Uh, and the find it on day one was uh, at least two small blue Ohio-shaped markers to note the flood of 1913. Uh, here's the one that we found uh, on our way to the Fallen Timbers Memorial Park and Turkey Foot Rock in Maumee, Ohio. Uh, this is actually right down the road, and we just took a picture of uh, Speedy Baja and uh, Rice Krispies. Uh, so here is the Fallen Timbers Memorial uh, Turkey Foot Rock in Maumee, Ohio. Uh, we just took a picture of all the signs with our mascot, the Hoonicorn, um, to show everyone what was going on. Uh, there was quite a bit of stuff here, actually, and I'm probably going to go back and check everything out uh, one of these days when we get a chance to go on vacation, because a lot of these spots were pretty cool, and kind of regret not having more time to... Uh, play around, but it was pretty cool. 
This uh, is some pictures of the Lima Toledo Interurban Railroad Bridge in Waterville, Ohio. As you can see, Mike is uh, quite happy about that. Shortly after that, we decided to head out to the Beetle Tower in Defiance, Ohio. It was pretty cool. A uh, good photo opportunity for all the cars uh, there. And shortly after we left, another team showed up and was given a whole bunch of stickers and things from the pawn shop where these cars were actually at. And I uh, was handing them out to everyone on the rally that they saw. Um, just to pass it along since the uh, owner was so cool about everyone stopping taking pictures. Uh, on our way to the next stop, we uh, stopped uh, periodically at this really quick little uh, abandoned gas station general store with some old cars out front just for a quick photo opportunity because, you know, why not? Let's have some fun and, uh, you know, I'd probably a lot of people do that and have a good time. And uh, we stopped at the next flood marker at a little park and uh, had to have some fun with it, with the unicorn here. And uh, then we started our way over to the Museum of Postal History in Delphos, Ohio. Um, I think the place is actually closed down now, so we just took a couple quick photos of the sign and we're ready to leave and ran to one of our good friends there in the Buick, uh, Carl from Shitbox Tourist on uh, Instagram. Uh, he stopped by to say hi to us and everything like that. Uh, we went to the America's first car accident in Ohio City, Ohio, and I had to crash into the sign uh, just to prove a point. Actually, I bought this cool handbag and plate uh, in order to do that. And shortly afterwards, we had a lot of warning lights on the dashboard just because water was getting in all the sensors. Um, next, we stopped at the largest excavation of the Miami Erie Canal in Spencerville, Ohio. It's called the Deep Cut. It's a cool park. I wanted to actually go hiking down to it, but it was two and a half miles one direction, and I'm fat, and I do not like to exercise. So the signs here would have to do uh, for credit. Um, next, we headed over to Wapakoneta, Ohio, and took a couple pictures with some spacecraft uh, before... Uh, putting our heads together with a bunch of other teams to try to find um, the Phoebe Ann Moses famed rifle, which uh, is actually Annie Oakley. And after a bunch of discussions, we found a couple different possible locations. So we decided that we would hit both of them just to make sure we got our points. Uh, it says it was the uh, famed rifle, kind of. And as you can see in the other photo, there was actually a rifle hanging there. And uh, so we... We did that and headed to the second location that we thought might be it as well. Uh, there's that rifle there I was talking about. And this is the second location where you can kind of see like a rifle shape in the rock, which was kind of cool. So we didn't know if that was it either. So yeah, uh, after this, we headed to the Pequa Milling Company uh, in Pequa, Ohio. Um, took like a couple photos. You can see Mike's uh, admiring the architecture of the town. And I was just having too much fun taking pictures of the Detroit special and all people's faces uh, looking at it, asking, uh, what the heck was that? Uh, last stop of the day was the Wright Brothers Cycle Company in Dayton, Ohio. Um, it was really late, and you could actually get extra credit uh, points by dressing like Orville, Wilbur, or Catherine and taking a picture and submitting it, but... It just didn't make any sense with how limited our time was uh, to do that. So we decided to stop to the Spaghetti Warehouse there in Dayton, Ohio, and get a good dinner. And uh, at first we thought the place was closed, but it was open. Uh, it was kind of cool on the inside, a bunch of license plates and everything like that. Uh, took a panoramic photo, that's why it looks so funny um, there. And uh, got a fun story from uh, Jackson and uh, Matt from the Rice Krispies. Unfortunately, at that point, little did we know, this was the last we would see of Speedy Baja and Charlie for the rest of the rally. Uh, so it was kind of a bittersweet moment, and uh, just wanted to kind of post some photos of his car and stuff like that so that you can see uh, what's going on. But stay tuned for part two to figure out uh, what happens to Charlie and with the rest of the rally on day two of Rust Belt Ramble 2022. Thank you very much for watching.